Okay, so <laughs> good afternoon to everyone. Uh, first, I would like to say that uh, the main author of this, uh, of this presentation is my friend and colleague, Paul Jelinek, who unfortunately couldn't be here today, so it is up to me to present our work. Hope I can do it. Uh, in our presentation, we uh, focus on the birch tree and its use and sim symbolism, especially in the Bronze Age. Uh, we're also working on an article on this topic. Hopefully, we'll finish it at some point. <laughs> uh, we focus on several areas uh, that we found interesting, which includes uh, practical use of birch products. Okay. Practical use of birch products such as uh, pitch, sap, wood, or bark, which was used for vessels or other types of um, ornaments or jewelry, possibly. Uh, bird products were and still are used in carpentry, tannery, textile production, food production. Some of these products are related also to health or uh, used in uh, cosmetics. Uh, and there's also a possibility of apotropic function of birch products, uh, which, well, this idea is based mostly on uh, mostly on uh, analogies documented in uh, recent ethnographic research, which is such as uh, birch um, brooms, which are used, for example, to eradicate uh, evil spirits from houses. For, for this purpose, the birch was the tree that was uh, often selected in Slovakia. So the question that we tried to uh, answer was, uh, did birch tree have some symbolic meaning uh, in uh, the Bronze Age? Uh, we had to uh, include not only birch artifacts, but also analogies made of uh, similar items made of other uh, materials as uh, organic products in or items in general are very rarely uh, preserved in a very good condition. So we also work with analogies from iconography of, of, from other parts of the world, recent oral traditions. And we came to a conclusion that uh, birch possibly had uh, symbolic meanings in the Bronze Age, and it was possibly related to female world, or some items were, uh, were possibly seen as uh, some feminine attributes. Uh, so what got us interested in this topic in the f first place? Uh, were, uh, was, was a set of uh, items found in prehistoric well of Ottoman culture dug out of a travertine mound in Ganovce in Slovakia. This well was uh, 4.7 meters deep from the current surface. Uh, it, uh, there, there were several uh, stratigraphic layers who were uh, excavated. And among others arti uh, other artifacts, there were several uh, birch bark vessels, uh, whole or fragmented and also some other objects that uh, resembled or were inter interpreted as uh, resembling earrings of uh, CBU type of from that are typical in the of Bronze Age in Slovakia, especially in the Ottoman culture. This set of finds and also the whole uh, situation was never completely published and examined in uh, some uh, complex way, so that's what we are attempting. So first we had to use uh, of or focus on birch products in prehistory. There were several uh, several items uh, that were found in several contexts. For example, in the Paleolithic period, uh, the mostly uh, uh, birch pitch was used for, for example, for fixation of stone blades uh, in the uh, wooden handles. Uh, similar, uh, similar in or. This material was used in a, a similar way also in the Neolithic peri uh, period for reparation of pottery. And in some cases, uh, pitch was also found in uh, burial contexts with imprints of teeth. So the idea was that it might have been used uh, for fixation of jaw in burials or possibly it had some uh, health related function. We will probably never know for sure. We can try to find out. Uh, in Slovakia, birch uh, bark artifacts are rather rare. Uh, in fact, the only more complex uh, situation where this type of artifacts was found was this well I mentioned before. Uh, as I mentioned, it contained these uh, vessels and earrings. So how we came to the idea that uh, these artifacts were related to a uh, female world or uh, that how can they be uh, attributed uh, to uh, or connected with some feminine attributes. 
Uh, as I mentioned before, uh, some of these items that were found there uh, resembled, in a way, uh, a type of earring that was common in this period uh, in Ottoman culture uh, in this area. Uh, you can see a picture, from, probably you know them. But they, uh, this type of earring was uh, usually found in contexts that were related to uh, females, mostly uh, in female burials. That's why we did, uh, formulated this hypothesis that it probably could be a feminine attribute. Uh, this uh, assumption is made, uh, we made this as uh, assumption also uh, or supported by analysis of a Ottoman burial ground in Nizhna Mishla, which was one of the most thoroughly excavated and published uh, burial grounds from this period in Slovakia. Uh, 792 burials were excavated and published. Uh, earrings of this, well, not made of birch bark, but uh, similar made of uh, bronze or gold, were found in 91 uh, female burials and 17 male burials, which uh, suggest that there's some gender related pattern there. Uh, uh, also there, uh, this, this pattern is also apparent in a way how this, uh, this type of earring is positioned in a grave. For example, in female burials, uh, they are more often worn in pairs, while in ma male burials, if they are present, there's only one present. And also the, the typology or the, the morphological typology of uh, these earrings, as there are several types, suggests that this type of earring that possibly is linked to the birch artifacts that we, uh, we are discussing could be associated with females, not with males. Of course, uh, interpretation of birch earrings is problematical due to the fact that they are absolutely unique. So uh, there are several... Uh, possibilities like why these uh, imitations were made. Possibly they could have been an imitation made by uh, members of some lower uh, social classes or ranks because they were made from cheaper materials. Or this material, the birch bark, was chosen for some specific meaning, possibly symbolic. Uh, uh, another uh, type of artifact that we uh, were discussing was a uh, type of uh, birch vessel which uh, was not uh, directly documented in uh, female burials, but a similar uh, imitation made of clay uh, with a uh, decoration that resembles the stitching on the, uh, on the bark vessels that were found in several uh, female burials as well. So if this vessel was an imitation of birch bark vessel, it would also suggest that there might be a connection. So, and how we got to anthropomorphism from there, which is the topic of this section. Um, as I said, uh, we uh, discussed the possibility that birch artifacts or birch tree is associated with females. And sometimes possibly the tree or the birch tree was or might have been uh, anthropomorphized as a female. Well, uh, the whole concept of anthropomorphism is natural for human beings. It's spontaneous, naturally present in human thoughts, and minds are predisposed for detection of agency and animacy of objects around us based on some similarities that these ob objects share with uh, people. Uh, which can be uh, this uh, similar mechanism can be also observed, for example, in some animal species like. Uh, I think it was mentioned in some uh, previous uh, presentation, like when you see a car and it looks like it's smiling because it has lights which resembles eyes. So this, from a, a certain point of view, could be seen as, as could be seen as an evolutionary advantage. Like if you expect some agent which can be possibly dangerous for you and you run away, then you probably have a better chance of surviving. surviving. If there's no predator there and you don't, you don't run, well, nothing happens, but if there is. Uh, and this idea was uh, linked to, of, in the cognitive science of religion, to a possible origin of religions, like the religion originates in human mind itself. Uh, it was uh, elaborated more by uh, Stuart Guthrie in his uh, uh, book of Faces in the Clouds. 
uh, which is basically, uh, he focused on the, how people are predisposed to anthropomorphize uh, different objects, animate or inanimate, and to treat them as if they were human. Uh, also, another uh, idea that we were discussing is uh, was elaborated by uh, Pascal Boyer, uh, which uh, and this uh, includes uh, intuitive knowledge domains. I don't know if you are familiar with this concept or not, but I can. I don't know if it's visible. Uh, the thing is that uh, also several of uh, animate, inanimate objects, animals, trees rocks, whatever we find in the world around us, uh, has some characteristics that we know uh, intuitively. We don't need to explain to children of certain age that animals can move, that they need to eat something, and if they don't eat, they die. For, also, trees or plants need to be watered. If we stop watering them, they die because they are living, but they are plants, so they cannot move. And this is something that it doesn't need to be explained over and over again. It's the intuitive knowledge that we obtain as humans during our lives. And if these uh, domains or uh, some of the these aspects get violated in some way, the brain naturally starts to treat these uh, ideas as more significant, more important. Which means that uh, uh, if for example, if you saw a flying tree, you would remember it. You don't remember a tree that's in your backyard because well, there are trees everywhere. These trees are not interesting to you at all. But if you saw a flying tree, then you, pro you, you don't tell your friends or whoever about the tree you saw in the field. But if you saw a flying tree, then you would probably tell other people. So that's how these ideas get transmitted between people. And that's also linked to the origins of uh, religion based in the concept of uh, cognitive science of uh, religion. And also, another idea to elaborate more on that is that this concept needs to be minimally counterintuitive. This means that if you overdo it, nobody's going to believe that and this, these ideas will be disregarded. So if you have a flying table, it's interesting, but if you have a flying table that can pay your rent and talks to you, then probably you'll just treated as not true at all, but the, if these uh, uh, domains are violated minimally, then it can be, uh, it can contribute to uh, creation of some of ideas that are linked to the origin of religion. And so how did we come to, uh, or how it relates to bird tree? Well, there are several aspects of uh, this tree that we uh, thought that, you uh, would be uh, that are interesting and probably could relate to anthropomorphism. Oh, these are just some examples of uh, anthropomorphization of zoomorphization of uh, several natural elements. For example, you can see something that resembles an animal. People uh, tend to see this item or cutting a rock like an animal. But I think I need to. Just keep a few slides because I don't have time. <laughs> okay, so why uh, should a birch tree be seen as uh, more interesting or more uh, important than other types of trees? And what's why we think that this supports our idea? Uh, for example, one thing is uh, the idea of uh, people being breastfed by trees which is not something that we invented. It was also documented, for example, in shamanic traditions in Siberia, in uh, uh, some recent, more or less recent uh, ethnographic research. It was, there are also several documented cases uh, where something similar can be seen in iconography. And this can be related to the fact that uh, the birch tree, uh, especially in the spring, can give uh, a lot of a large amounts of sap, which is something that is drunk until today. That there are even parts of the world where there is an al alcoholic beverage is made of it. You can make several products such as sugar and similar similar uh, things. Uh, so there was this idea that the birch, or the, the birch, is one of the trees that possibly could be linked to the idea of people being breastfed by a tree. 
And also another thing uh, which uh, I think that might contribute to this is that uh, birch is white, which means it's very different from the other trees you can see in the forest. It separates it from them. It's more, more radiant, you immediately notice it. So that's probably another thing why also birch bark was selected for some purposes, decorative or maybe even with symbolic meaning, because of its color that, that's very radiant and differs from uh, projects of everyday, uh, products of everyday use. Oh, so uh, to conclude, uh, that we think that well, uh, conclude, uh, so there we had some several ideas about how birch can be related to uh, females or anthropomorphized as a female based on its uh, physical properties. For example, with the, the, the sap that it can give, and also the connection of birch artifacts uh, with a female world or female attributes is uh, apparent uh, in the con archaeological context, especially in the Boreal. So that's why we think that there probably might be uh, some connection, although we are sure that some of you might object because, well, these, uh, these artifacts are very, very rare. It's uh, very uh, scarce uh, or they're very scarce in archaeological context. So to make some definitive uh, conclusions, well, if we say that this is it, then probably we would be reaching very far away. But uh, we just figured it's an interesting idea to maybe explore further and see if we come, can come up with something more definitive maybe in the future. So thank you for your attention. <laughs>